In this three-part video, I'm going to create this flower painting. In part one, I discuss the type of canvas that I use, how to tone a canvas and why, how I mixed the base color, and how to compensate for how acrylics dry darker. This is the canvas I'm using. It's a Blick Studio stretched canvas, and it's the traditional profile. The canvas is pretty smooth, and I find that they're usually pretty tight, and the canvas is stretched and stapled on the back. I'd rather spend the time painting than stretching canvas and applying gesso to it. This is an 8x10 canvas and it's a 3 quarter inch thickness, which is the standard thickness for a canvas. Normally I tone the canvas with like a transparent layer of burnt sienna and it's streaky, but I think this time I'm going to do like a solid color, like this light orange color, and I'm going to use Liquitex acrylic wash to do that because it leaves a matte surface which is easier to draw on. But if you don't have this, you can use ultra matte medium and add that to your acrylic paint to make it more matte. I've done a number of color mixing demos and this is a good demonstration here of how this might be useful. So this is titanium white and I'll add yellow to it. And then a touch of this red to make it more orange. So more yellow, I need to make more of this. So I'll just incorporate all this white in here. This is like a gray palette paper. Uh, the gray is easier to mix colors on because it's not stark white. Sometimes if it's too white, it makes this look too dark. Okay, so I'm looking at this and it needs more red in there. One way you can prevent yourself from making a mistake, and people ask me if I ever have to start over, you could just try out a little bit on the side and see what the effect is on the color. And if it doesn't turn out the way you want, you just dispose of it and then you still have this left over. So you really don't have to start over. need more yellow. It's too much red, but I have all this color here to add back into it. So that's, that's pretty good. I know I can get there, so I'll just mix all this in there. The other thing too is acrylics sometimes dry darker, and it depends on the color and the brand, but I could test that out. It doesn't really matter. This is just a background color that I'm gonna paint on top of, but if it were critical, you could make that match perfectly. I think more yellow. A palette knife is easier for mixing large batches of color. And I kind of like the softness of this palette because my knife conforms to it or it conforms to my knife and I can really mix it in there really well. It still needs more red. That's what it needs. Put some more white in there. I need more volume anyway, so. It's not bad. I think that's it. It's close enough. Put just a little bit more red in there. Just doing some final tweaks to the color. I think it needed that yellow. Just a touch more white. Just trying to get rid of all the streaks. I'll just test out a little bit here. So you can see that dry just a little bit darker. So how do you fix that? You just, you add a touch of white to it. So it's a matter of trial and error. You can just lighten it a little bit and just accept the results. If you need exact results, you lighten it up and then brush it on and dry it and compare it. If it looks good, then you're done. But if you if it's not, you gotta do it over again. Still a little bit lighter. So I'll add more of this white in here. So I'll dry that off, see if it matches. I'd say that's pretty good. I think just a hair lighter, plus it'll help me extend the paint a little bit. So it's probably close enough, so I'll just brush it all on here. It's probably going to need more than one coat. So the first one will be thin, and that will make it look lighter than what it should be, but it's just like painting a house. It's kind of relaxing. Now the reason to go thin is just so that it dries faster, and you can put a second coat on. 
I like this color already. The thinner areas look more yellow and the thicker areas look more orange. I'm just trying to brush out any thick brush strokes or any thick textures and that looks good enough. So I'll dry it. I'm trying to brush in a different direction for the second coat just so I don't get a pattern in this first layer of paint. Maybe do some more circular motions. You can see the difference here. I mean, that's that's uh, that's dry and that's wet. So you can see there's a slight shift. For most paintings, it probably wouldn't even matter. And it's not the only medium that has this trouble. Watercolor actually dries lighter. You have to learn how to deal with that. So this is the second coat. It's dry and you can tell it's a fairly close match. The edge of this sample is faded because this book is like 15 years old, but I would say that's close enough and the issue of it drying darker has been addressed and it just takes a little bit of extra white in your paint and that compensates for it. An aspect ratio is the relationship between the height and the width. So this has an aspect ratio of four by five. One thing to keep in mind when you do this is that the outside perimeter and these shapes actually can help you draw. So I'm just looking at like how far this top flower is from the sides. A negative shape is the shape that surrounds the subjects. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and here are more videos and playlists that you can check out.